thing on the agenda is we're going to have a standing um, discussion <clears throat> for software implementation and also uh, for the first time we're going to go through through potential opportunities to write grants. Just as a quick note, we are recording this meeting, the Chaos Value Working Group meeting on April 26, and we'll be providing this video on YouTube. Okay, uh, well, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> uh, reviewing the action items, I think most of them were <laughs> my action items. Uh, let's see. Um, for the first one, I believe we decided to not do a pull request. Instead, we're going to, to update the, uh, the spreadsheet. Does that ring a bell, Georg? Um, I think what you're talking about is the spreadsheet with the um, funding opportunities. No, there was a there was a separate spreadsheet that you put together, which had um, a list of focus areas for each working group, focus areas and metrics, along with a kind of a voting, you know, red, green, yellow type of a. Yeah, color. I know which spreadsheet you're talking about. Um, that has a different purpose. That is a spreadsheet for Matt for when we release the metrics, just to know which ones are going to be in the release. Okay. And that has a different purpose from this action item, which is to put the work that we are doing on the labor investment, which is much more detailed into the repository for everyone to find. Okay. Because labor investment is the metric that we are focusing on for developing. And so we need the details in the repository so that we can include it in the release. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And um, so let's move, let's give me that action item again this week. Let's see if I can do it right. You can take an example from the next one. I had created a pull request to add living wages to the repository. Okay. I don't know if you merged it yet. Um, so just as a background for uh, especially Johan, but everyone who is maybe not as familiar with our process, we have in our repository issues. And I'm going to post the link to the repository in the chat. And when you go to the issues in the repository, you see that we have several feedback on focus areas. And those issues link to Google Docs, where we can all collaboratively work together and collect ideas, refine them. And then these pull requests that we've been talking about in the action items are to take the work that we have done in the Google Doc and put it into the repository so that we can share it there. Did I miss anything, Andy? Nope. So mm -hmm. the second action item is uh, to track the funding or grant writing opportunities. That's done. And we did that as a Google Doc, not as a, um, not as a spreadsheet. And there is a link now in our README that, that links, to the, um, links to that Google Doc. Oh, okay. Okay. I think that's all the action items we had from last week. I just posted the link to the grant spreadsheet in case uh, people want to have a look at that. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm looking at the, um, oh, grant, all right. there it is, grant applications. So are we pursuing any of these? I mean, or I guess pursuing the first one, I guess is the first question. I missed the last call, so I don't know if there's work underway. So this was, uh, so what we did last week was we spent, um, we just spent time figuring out what, you know, what is the format of our tracker? You know, what do, what do we, how do we want to prioritize and, you know, how do we want to identify these opportunities? Mission accomplished. And um, so I think we've got a nice layout. And so now we just need to use it. And, you know, so what we want to do periodically is do, do some brainstorming, put items that may potentially be of interest onto this list. And then I think weekly we want to talk about each one of these opportunities, decide if we want to go after them. And if we want to go after them, you know, who's going to be the, who's going to take the lead? What do we want to say? Th things of that nature. So currently these are just on the list. These are things that we discovered a couple of weeks ago, Sean. Yeah. I, In fact, I you remember, discovered them. I think, I think, yeah, I was looking around and I saw what we were talking. I don't remember. I remember they both kind of fit. I want to say the one with the car call that's farther away fit a little better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'd have to do a gender equity um, dimension on the advanced grant, which is not, it's not hard to do that authentically at all. Uh, it, I think with that deadline, that's, you know, I don't know who can do that. I certainly can't, I certainly can't lead that one. Mm -hmm. um, in that time frame, my semester isn't over yet. And it's actually the worst time of my semester. Well, maybe the first question is, how can we discover more opportunities? Like, like what is a, an efficient way to do that? Uh, maybe one way would be we just block out an hour here and there where we get a, a group of people on a call and, you know, we just kind of do Google, Google searches and see what we come up with. Or maybe there's one person who is the lead and that it's that person's job to go out and, you know, try and find opportunities and, and put them on this list. Or maybe there's some other method that we can adopt. Uh, yeah, I think we have to, I mean, those are, Getting funding is a good idea, obviously. Um, we have, there's probably a lot to discuss. I don't know if Matt's on the call about how to lead these through um, NSF. We definitely need a nonprofit research organization to submit anything to NSF. Obviously, mm -hmm. Matt and our universities are in a position to do that. <coughs> we can include in the budget work for people who are not at universities. Uh, usually that's budgeted in the form of a subcontract. If there are other opportunities that are not NSF, then I mean, obviously those are the things that Matt and I are less, that's less of what we do, but. Um, well, I think the primary focus would be, let's pick things that support you and Matt. Yeah, I mean, that's great. <laughs> We're definitely already doing that. Um, but, uh, if there's an, I think there might be also, there's an opportunity in the Linux foundation, maybe Georg can elaborate on more with regards to their community organizations. I know diversity and inclusion is pursuing a, what is it called again, Georg? Um, so we have the Linux foundation community bridge, which is a platform for basically crowdfunding open source work and a way to manage money within uh, communities in a transparent ledger. The community bridge also has two additional modules. One is mentoring and the other one is security and software. 
right. some scanning source code and stuff. So I think um, Secure Team Software, what was the other one? Uh, one is the money, one is mentoring, and one is security. Those three components make up Community Bridge. Software, mentoring, and security? Money, mentoring, and security. And security. All right, yeah. So yeah, what, what we could do um, is put out a call for, we want to get money on the community bridge once it's set up, which Matt is working on, uh, specifically for work in the value group. And then we can even source money for a salary through community bridge. But then we would have to go out and find people to actually fund the work and basically donate the money. May I just uh, ask, uh, is this, are we looking at research grants from, or, uh, or the ones of us that are American researchers? So research grants, basically. I mean, we're talking, that's what we're talking about right now, but there are similar Me mechanisms in the EU. I think there's also obviously other sources of funding that we can we can see um, collectively. So I see Matt, Jim, and Pray joined. Hi, Matt. Good morning. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. No worries. We were just talking about funding mechanisms outside of NSF. Um, that's where we are on the agenda and outside the US. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've done a little bit of brainstorming and um, Andy suggested maybe we take some time either individually or on a separate call. I'm not quite sure exactly what you were discussing. Um, to, to sort of try to flesh out some a strategy for that yeah so um, so Matt we've got a we've got a, a grant tracking spreadsheet um, and the link is in the chat it's the last link in the chat and and right now we've we've got two um, items on that spreadsheet that we have des designated as strong fits and so you know the question is what is a kind of an efficient and repeatable way to, you know, pump up the volume of opportunities that go onto the list. And um, if we could figure out what that mechanism is, I think that'd be very helpful. Uh, one idea might be we, you know, we periodically have got a brainstorming session where people are who are interested in this, you know, just get, get together, spend an hour, do a bunch of Google searching, you know, put opportunities on the list. Maybe that's one mechanism. Maybe another mechanism would be one person is, you know, a grant guru and that person just takes charge and um, is responsible for kind of putting, you know, deal flow onto the spreadsheet. Maybe there's another mechanism that would be better. Uh, so, um, I guess I'm suggesting, I, I think if we could come up with some sort of a mechanism, give it a try, that'd be great. Sure. So I, I think grants, I think one of the things that I've been thinking about on this is there's, there's kind of grants that are research oriented. Right. Um, and they're, they're, they're typically, what's that? That's kind of what the NSF does. Yeah. So they're, they're really about driving understanding about a particular area of interest. Um, so, so they're kind of like grants about something. Um, there are also grants that are for something. So for, for scaling or for supporting a 
particular initiative. And they're kind of two different things. And so I think as part of this process, the, the grants really need to be a, about scaling something up. If we're looking for external support, um, that's, that's my take. Um, the, the NSF, if, if you're trying to use granting, granting agencies that are really about research orientation, it's gonna be really hard to kind of distribute those funds within a community. Yeah, I was saying that we could possibly do some subcontracts if we need technical work done. Yeah. But, but it's, yeah, it is hard to make that something that supports a community. It's really about the research. Um, and the results have to show that. Although I think, I mean, I certainly would make the claim that what we're doing here is. So uh, uh, do you know of any companies? Uh, I know Nifirov from Comcast Cable, and they have um, an innovation uh, fund, which they they grant money to uh, to research projects or uh, different community initiatives that are in line with their goals and so on. Um, yeah. So I, I'll take a look at that one, but that might be more aligned with, I guess if it's coming from Comcast, I think out of the box, it would be more aligned with trying to scale or trying to align, like you were saying, initiatives at Comcast with open source projects. Yeah, I, I think my, my point is that a good thing could make, be maybe to to talk to the, the open source officers at uh, via the to-do group uh, and see yeah. what kind of... Uh, grants that the companies could to could give uh, yeah. because I mean bis business metrics and and measuring the contributions from a business perspective is a very hot topic and top priority for or a recognized challenge for a lot of companies so I think yeah. if you talk to the right people and and, and uh, yeah it, yep, it should I, be I some opportunity there yep I agree with that that seems like a good path I also add that the Mozilla open source support awards or MOS grants I have to leave now thanks for uh, for a uh, good meeting I'll hook up to you later bye thanks thank bye -bye. you bye. Yeah. So I think we've said essentially there's there is like two types of funding. One is academic funding, mm -hmm. and and then there's maybe funding that could be used more broadly across mm -hmm. the community. And I think what we're I think what we've just said is that we want to we would like to pursue both. Yeah, just to to be for I mean we're we're always kind of pursuing the academic funding from an academic side. That's just kind of an ongoing thing. So thank um, you. The grants in an academic side, they do take a while to assemble and scale up to even remotely be competitive. So they're not just like an afternoon of putting together. I mean, they take, <laughs> I mean, upwards of a month sometimes to assemble. Mm -hmm. um, and they take very large teams to assemble as well. So um, versus I think sometimes the um, the other, other grants. style of grants looking to, to scale a particular project, they're usually a little bit smaller and a little bit more palatable to put together from my experience. So it, my take would be is that the, the grants or support that would come from say organizations or corporations might be something that could be a little bit um, faster to assemble. Versus the academic ones, which they just take a long time. That's all. They do. And they incur different rates of overhead. And yeah. The non NSF dollars are a little bit more fluid. They require less overhead. Yeah. 
and, and it's a little bit easier to manage the money sometimes from a budgeting perspective. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other kind of just from my own personal perspective, um, running one NSF grant is a ton of work. It just is. And so like running two in a very optimistic way. I mean, the, when the funding rates are three or 4% to say that I would actually have two <laughs> is, is not, not high on the likelihood scale, but um, I don't know that that would be something that I could even do. It would, it would be close to being not possible. Yeah, I know I've done it and it's close to mine. It's, it's close to life destroying. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I just, these are, these are just things to kind of think about in this process. And I certainly do appreciate this conversation. Yeah. Me too. So should we leave it there for today on, on grants? Um, should we uh, schedule just a, a grant specific discussion? How do people feel? I think I'd prefer to keep it in this channel. Okay. Then we can just do, maybe do some action items to continue to have people to kind of survey the landscape. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. In one action item could be um, you know, everyone do a search and contribute one idea or, you know, one opportunity to the spreadsheet. I'm sure that'd be fine. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, I added the action item to the minute, to the minutes. Okay, well, let's do it. We'll see what we come up with next week. Sounds good. You want to move on to software implementation? Uh, you're muted, Andy, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, last week we said that yes, we do want to um, create a reference implementation for the value uh, working group. Uh, we'd like that to be sort of our, our own instance so that we can innovate and um, you know we can make changes. Uh, so I think it, maybe this week we can talk about what might that look like how would it be hosted, what software would be, would be used, and what types of contributions do we need to get that started? So I have a quick, quick show and tell of something that's not quite deployed in software yet, but uh, represents, uh, I think, kind of an interesting analysis of one of the value metrics that we discussed, and uh, we're in the process of implementing it in Augur. I can find my Zoom screen. I'll just share it. 
So it's just a summary of some repos. Forgive the shorthand for where they exist. But basically, by repo and by language, we have uh, lines of code that exist and average complexity. So those numbers can be used to derive, and this is using the SCC package in concert with Augur. This, this can be, these numbers can be derived um, in a parameterized way. So if you want to calculate value from them, that's, that's something that, that will make possible. Uh, and that metric, that metric will be deployed in Augur. My guess is our next, next release and we are starting and that's, we do two week sprints and our next sprint starts today. So, you know, by repo, so you be able to look at, let me just bring something up here. See the A and all. So kind of the way that gets presented is this way, where you have a group of projects that you can sort in different ways. There are 300 some projects in here with 6,800 repos. And if you click on any one repo, you'll get the stats about that repo. So that includes, you know, in this case, this is a summary of all the repos in that group of repos at the top. Uh, and then these are empty for some reason. Might be that the, the new repo thing isn't working the way I want it to. Um, and then for a regular Git repo, oops, I'll jump to another tab. Maybe I won't jump to another tab. All right, I'll stay here. For, for individual repos, then we can also see statistics. Um, so like I can do Apache QPID and apply. So this is this will draw ultimately a comparison. I'm using a beta version because I wanted to show the full project list. Um, a better version might be over at um, oops, that didn't work. Or I, I might have killed this version. But if I pick one, uh, if I pick any one of the repos, usually if I do the Git tab, I'll see the monthly contribution visualized like this. I think I've shown this before. Haven't I, Andy? Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, and that, but then the, I guess my point is, I guess I wanted to show that so that you can see that the, the tooling that we proposed for these metrics, which are looking at lines of code complexity and providing potential value calculations, that those will be also in that same kind of user interface, as well as exposed through an API. So if you want to build your own, you can. So this is awesome. This would be an awesome place to start. So that's just, uh, that's just one example. I'm not suggesting it is the only one, but I just wanted to have something to show um, with regards to progress. So I think what we want is um, an instance of the system for the value group that we can use. Does, yeah. does, does that make sense? So um, I guess one question is where should we host it? Uh, I've, got a, I've got a bare metal machine that um, we could put up a virtual it requires a virtual machine. Is that is that correct, Sean? Um, no, I mean uh, I host. So when I host, like the sixty eight hundred repo set that I demonstrated there, that is hosted. Data and Augur are hosted on a pretty big box. Mm -hmm. um, I've got I think a total of eighteen cores and one hundred and twenty eight gigs of RAM, oh. and solid state drives. But that's because sixty eight hundred repos equals a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you want that to perform well off of the base data, then that's what you do. In the long run, there are some, we've already got some 
data generated into what I characterize as like data mart like tables where <clears throat> excuse me the, <coughs> the summarizations you want to see on a on a computer screen are already generated uh, that will make that'll make that perform faster on a smaller machine mm -hmm. so I guess the I guess the 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 options for hosting would be use my bare metal machine, which which actually seems kind of underpowered <laughs> compared to what you're talking about. Well, it depends well, how many repos we want to use to as example. Okay, because okay. we do it like you know some of our projects have like ten repos. Like you could we could do a, maybe two collections or four collections of repositories with a total of like forty repositories between them, and I mean that's. Frankly, that's not that. That's a good, useful case for most community managers, and I don't know that we have any value in doing sixty-eight hundred repos as a, as a working group prototype. No, um, absolutely not. I mean, if if we started with half a dozen, I think that'd be just fine. Yeah, and I, I have a bunch of I have a bunch already up in Docker containers um, for different purposes. So, I mean, if we want to pick a set of repos that we use as examples, or just I mean, we can, you can pick any repos. Um, I've got a bunch. Then we could do that or, or we, or, or we, you know, so we can just take a sample of repos that I start with and do that or we could do something else. Um, we could, we could pick our repos. Could, could we just pick a, pick maybe four, five, six repos right now and just, just say that this is our starting point? I could just pick four or five repos for us and but, put it up there and then we can start talking around that and we can say what else they want. That'd be perfect. Okay. So Sean, did I capture your action item correctly to set up an instance of Augur with four to six repos for the value group? Yes. Awesome. I guess I could just call it value.augur. Dot dot, do I'll just call it value. Or I can call it, um, I guess, do we call it uh, wg-value in the repo? Is that the repo name, right? Yes, it yes. is. I think I think I can use a dash in a in a name, can I? Or yes, you can. Okay, so I'll just do wg dash value, and that way it'll be clear it's tied to the working group and not some awesome. bizarre claim of value. And. Sean, could you post a link if you have it to your your sprint schedule or, or your your sprint plans? Um, I have, I have like an internal board that includes all my people's information. I have I I owe the world a roadmap, and okay. I, I will before this next. I mean, I have to have that out for Google Summer of Code for for a whole lot of reasons. I need to put that roadmap out of my head. What the whiteboards. Um, and in the discussion. So um, I'm going to focus just, I'll focus, there's really two tracks to the roadmap. The first track is features like value metrics. The second track is, I think I've mentioned before, we're consolidating all of the sources of data into a single database, which makes cross, cross collection analysis easier. So for example, we can look at total lines of code at a moment in time uh, compared to commits over a period of time from the Git repos. So there's a, a, a bunch of information that's currently in different physical, not fit, yeah, different, different databases that would be consolidated into one and make the generation of re metrics that link those together. Mm -hmm. So um, and I'll just, that'll be showing up on the roadmap. Is, is that, is that going to be in Postgres? Yeah, because Postgres is just uh, well. My, I think our collective opinion is it's, it performs better. Yeah, for the kinds of things that we want to do. 
How do you, how do you handle time series data in Postgres? Um, it depends what you mean by time series data. Like for example, we do aggregations by week or month, mm -hmm. and that's just a query. Uh, okay. if, if the number of repositories is large enough, that those are the cases where we go to a data mart style, um, especially for summary statistics, where it's just essentially a process that runs over the full collection of commits, for example, and, and gives you statistics mm -hmm. summarized by project, by week, or weekly, monthly, and annually are kind of the aggregations in this in the data itself. And we offer uh, RESTful APIs for all the metrics as well. So if you don't like our front end, you don't have to live with it. Super nice. Is, is the data mart part of Postgres or is that is that like some sort of an indexing process outside of Postgres? Well, right now it's, they're just, Right now in the current world, there are just other tables inside the same MySQL database. Mm -hmm. I'm giving, you know, I haven't, for now, I think there'll likely be different tables inside of the Postgres database it, that, that summarize things. Mm -hmm. it, it, over the long haul, one could argue there's, you know, if we put those in a separate database and try to drive all of the front end statistics instead of raw data off of summarized data, um, there are performance values to that. But the, the, we have to weigh those choices against requests we have to, for example, drill down into the details of the time series of commits. Right. Um, so there's a lot of, there, there gets to be trade-offs once you get to that level, as you surely know. So would it be like a, would it be like a cron process that like runs once a night and, you know, goes off and, and generates this, this aggregated view? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, for stuff that we would collect daily, yes. And that would be your Git repo information is collected and updated daily. I think there are other things that we don't collect regularly, like uh, code, like line counting. Um, the rate of change in the number of lines of code or complexity in a project is relatively low. Right. So, so we, don't, we don't generate that in the summary form right now, but we don't have it on the front end yet. So it's, it's not a problem we've had to solve yet. Mm -hmm. But so far, I think that, you know, it ends up being a line per repo and language combination. So it's not, not, uh, not a large table. Mm -hmm. And, and will the, will the instance that you set up for the value group, will, will that be done as a, as a, a Docker uh, container or? That's fine. It's my thinking right now, just because that lets us bring it down and deploy it, and update it. Yeah. Um, it's a bit lighter weight way to get something going and keep it separated. Uh, yeah. I generally, I have, a, I think I have no public, in, I have no public instances of Augur that are actually not, that are actually served through Nginx that are not Docker containers. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I am my own sysadmin. Mm -hmm. so, um, I like to keep stuff like that as simple as I can. Yeah, personally, I think Docker would be the way to go. That'd just be awesome. So, Sean, are there are there things in in this Augur implementation that where you could use help from, from other people? Yeah, we're always looking for contributors. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our README, uh, our README file kind of gives a, an overview of how to start contributing. Um, we do have a vagrant machine that, that there was a, I'll just, I don't know if anybody cares, but there was a release of uh, virtual box in the last two weeks that broke Vagrant. And so I think the Vagrant fix has been put out there by the Vagrant community now, but it was <laughs> it was breaking pretty ugly for people for a couple weeks here. Um, if, if they updated their virtual box, which some people have it do that automatically. Um, so they had a couple of instances of that. But I think we, I think we solved those problems now. 
now that the fix is out for the bigger community. I also think it's much easier to build auger on your machine now than it used to be, but we'll still provide the vagrant image for newcomers. How are you collecting statistics? Are you using Percival to collect statistics? Using, so it depends. We have several data sources. Mm -hmm. One is Facade. So Facade is a, becoming a worker inside of Augur. And we just use Facade to go collect the fine grain Git repo data. We also have right now uh, an instance of GH Torrance, back, you know, latest release that gives us I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, that gives us that data. A lot of what we built initially was off the of GH Torrent because it's readily available and allowed people to compare any repo they could think of. We also have some things not deployed yet that are running off of libraries.io. And we also use the GitHub API to collect information for a bus factor metric that we have on, in the API, but not in the front end. Trying to think of what else is in there. But you're on the board the other day, but it's erased. I feel like there's one other. Oh, I feel like there's one other primary data source, but it's not coming to me right this second. So that'd be a real opportunity for people to get involved. Is um, yeah. Look at look at sources, add sources, enhance the sources that are there. It'd be a standalone type of a thing that people could do. Yeah, I mean, there's there are, and we've had we've had a couple of students through the Google Summer of Code make make pretty good contributions, which um, you know makes me happy because I, I don't think a year ago our new our newcomer experience was at the point where students were e able to easily figure it out and make a contribution, but, but now it is. So that's, that's good news. We, we, we progressed in some meaningful way. Um, I'll just throw a link to the Augur GitHub repo, which is under the chaos organization um, in there. And we now have DCO turned on here. I merged the pull request last night. Awesome, that's wonderful. <laughs> sorry, that, sorry that took so long. It was, it was bundled up with a bunch of other things. Yeah, so now we have DCO on all chaos repositories active. So I think that's all we need to say on software for today. Is, is there any other subjects people would like to discuss? So. I have a question about this instance of Augur that we are getting. Yeah. Um, how how do we see the working group interact with it? Is this a box that we all get access to and then can start tweaking the code or is it just our sandbox that we can look at the data but not actually change it and then it only gets updated when we have a new auger release or uh i think the way that i imagine it working is that some of the things that are going to happen for value i'm probably going to do out of band in a different branch just so i can put them up faster i think anyone who wants to contribute the value metric to auger could just follow the regular instructions and we can merge those pull requests into um, whatever branch we work off of. Um, I could keep, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit reluctant to keep it on master just because um, I want to make sure that I don't mess with. Uh, uh, so this, I guess, that lets us get value metrics out in front of the value group faster than if we rely on all the things happening inside of an ordinary sprint. Because those ordinary sprints are, are going to, you know, they'll include some value metrics but they'll include other things. And there may, be, there may be things that people who are contributing to this group are really principally interested in seeing for this group uh, that eventually, they'll eventually make it into a release um, on the master branch, but we don't have, I guess, 
I'm going to try to think it through. I've got two Google Summer, at least one Google Summer of Code student, and I've, it looks like I have, I have one for sure of my students working through the summer full time. So there should be a decent amount of uh, ability uh, to make progress. A lot of the things I've shown you have the back end work done and just need to be put into Augur, which I'll probably do myself. And then have the front, maybe have a Google Summer of Code student dedicated to the value metric universe. Uh, and if there's a second one, have them dedicated to risk. Um, I propose both in the um, Google Summer of Code proposal. And, and we can split between those working groups depending on, like the, the one I'm, we're getting for sure, us already made some significant contributions and I think would be able to do things like produce metrics relatively quickly. Um, uh, on, on that, uh, Sean, without naming anyone. Um, you said uh, that you found a mentor for the second student. Is it already set? Should I book him? Yeah, I um, I emailed you on that. But you need to, it is not set. I have to, I think the rest of the Chaos Google Summer Code team needs to align around that, you know, if, this, if that student will go with an Augur project or not. Um, I think I think there should probably be a discussion, but I th and I think it started over email. Okay, then I will wait. So right now we have one student one for sure, yeah. in the system, which is yeah. your student. Yeah, but I, th I think there needs to be a discussion, which we'll see how it goes. You know, and, and I, I just don't want to presuppose a community decision without the discussion. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. And I've, I've just now realized that I'm going to go off the entire time here because I'm usually like looking at the notes or something else, not your faces. But you will notice my University of Nebraska Omaha outerwear today. Um, I have I have a lot of it. <laughs> so. And I need to, I need okay. to run a couple of minutes myself because I have uh, office hours for my software engineering students and I have to go to a different room for that at noon. So what I took away from your reply is that the value working group is going to get its own branch in the Augur repository mm -hmm. where we can um, prototype Augur metrics and from that branch is where our instance of Augur will be maintained. initiated, right? And then the Augur team will do the work of merging things from master as they go in. Um, so the yeah. only thing, so so we would never erase value contributions. We would only be doing things that improved um, the Augur experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. So other. one of the. Um, Maybe this is too far down in the weeds, but for us to be able to merge something into value, we need someone on the repository with maintainer rights. Yep. So we would be dependent on the Augur maintainers to accept contributions to the value branch. Which includes me and okay. the, the, the team that I have. So there are, sure. Um, and you know, if, if people in the group start making contributions, you know, the, the path to maintainer on Augur is not not too difficult. You know, a few useful contributions that, um, especially if it accelerates the work of a working group. Um, but our process is pretty straightforward. Somebody submits a pull request, and then it requires two reviews, or it requires one review before anybody can merge it. Um, and the person submitting it can't do the merging. So mm -hmm. we. we you know, we have reasonable GitHub controls in place so we don't kill each other. Um, and it is, it is all running under Travis CI. So we, we also, that doesn't cover, it doesn't cover weird little things that can happen, but it covers a lot of it. Awesome. Thanks for that clarification. Sure. And I am sorry, but I have to run, but thanks everyone. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks, John. Thank you, Sean. Do you want to move on to our last?
agenda item for the last five minutes. Yep. So if we go to this spreadsheet, I think we had decided to do commit count by organization as the metric we focus on. So I think this um, I think this list is super fine to start with. Well, this is the list that we have in the repository. The job we have right now is identifying which ones we dedicate our time towards for the release and which ones we are just going to ignore for now. And so the way I understood it, and I'm just going to start color coding is we have the commit count by organization that we want to focus on and then everything else we are just going to ignore for now. Does that match everyone's perception of what we talked about so far? Well, um, I think the first, what's, what's Kokomo? Is that, is that code complexity? Uh, that is. Yes. Yes, that is. So the first four are going to come straight from Augur, I believe. And then the last items in the list would be parameterized values. Okay, so the question for this list is, which metrics are we planning to um, get to a level of completeness that we can include it in the release that is in two months? So where do we focus our work? So my opinion is all of them. And, and here's, here's what I'm thinking. We get the first four kind of for, for free from Augur. And the last ones would be plugin values. You know, you, you plug in your, your um, cost per your labor value per commit, and it's, it's a calculated value. Okay. So this means that our goal is to write a markdown page for each one of these metrics describing how to get the data and how to use the data, which in the first four means we're going to write a page that says commits are valuable because you find the data going to Augur, it can answer these questions. And then for the ones with labor investment, we say, do what we just said in the other document and now copy paste the data into a spreadsheet. And here's the formula you can use to parameterize it. Yes. Does there have to be one markdown for each metric? Yes. That is the structure we have so far. Um, if you have a better way, we can definitely think about a better way to do it. But so far, each metric has its own markdown page that details the instructions. So let's use that structure, and I think we should do all of them. Okay. I have a one question. So labor investment is a one uh, metric or it's a focus area and we have all these metrics to reach to that focus area. 
labor investment is the focus area. Okay, and these are the different ways we uh, get the data to reach to the labor investment. Yes. So uh, then can labor investment be a one metric or I, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time because to me commit count is a separate metric and all these when when all of these are combined then we have a labor investment. I Without think you're correct. Commit count is one metric that we need to be able to determine labor investment. So if I skip commit count, can I have a labor investment? I don't understand your question. Uh, my question is for labor investment, we need to have all these matrices, right? Yes. And for each matrices, we have a separate uh, markdown file. Or uh, all the markdowns will be in just labor investment section. So I, I think Eric said there's a separate markdown for each metric. Yes. Yeah, there's a separate markdown file for each metric. Okay. And labor investment is a focus area and metrics can inform that focus area, but all of the metrics don't have to be included. Okay, so if, if so, then my question is if I remove the commit count or I remove the issue count, can I still calculate the labor investment? Yes, if you're looking at other metrics can inform labor investment. So you don't, you don't, there are no metrics that have to inform that are, that are required, right? You, you pick and choose the metrics that work for your analysis to, uh, uh, for the focus area. Okay. 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 Was, now I got the clarity. Does that track York? Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay. We are out of time. So let's pick this up, um, here next week and maybe next week we can start prototype these pages in some Google Docs. Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, have a good weekend. You too. Bye.